Mini PCs aren't usually known for their great performance, especially in games, but more so for simple office tasks and video streaming. Overall, these are devices for lighter workloads. However, what if I told you there actually are mini PC models out there capable of handling light to even moderate gaming loads? Today's Ace Magician AMR5 claims to be a pretty solid mini PC even for gaming, video editing and the like. One of the AMR5's most interesting features surely has to be the knob that allows us to switch between three performance and cooling modes. That is silent, auto and performance. The latter unlocking and allowing the CPU to run at a higher TDP, a higher power limit, thus resulting in better overall performance but increased noise levels. What is the Ace Magician AMR5 really like? Should you consider picking one up? Needless to say, that also kinda depends on the pricing. It's worth noting that the AMR5 comes in different configurations, either with the Ryzen 5 5600U 6-core or Ryzen 7 5800U with 8-cores. You can also choose the RAM and SSD storage capacity, which of course directly affects the price. In today's test I'll be featuring the AMR5 model with the 5800U CPU, 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. At the time of this video we have to spend somewhere in between 360 to 430 US dollars on that. At the end of the day it comes down to one's luck as to when exactly you are purchasing one of these. Very well. The unboxing experience is fairly exciting and pleasant. That's a nice touch by the brand. I quite like that. And as far as what comes included, there's the mini PC, the power cord and the power adapter slash power supply, apparently capable of providing a maximum of 65 watts. Then there's an HDMI cable, some paper documentation, including a practically useless quick start guide, but at least there's a little note informing us about what type of RAM is actually supported by the device should you want to upgrade at a later date. On the notes back there are a few steps listed to obtain the RGB software for the PC. Ok, aesthetically speaking I have to say I'm not a fan of it, although to be honest I wouldn't rate it badly, just not super visually appealing. At the end of the day it's purely a matter of preference of course, but credit where it's due kudos for at least trying to stand out from the rest in terms of design. What I also like is that the device isn't placed the usual way but stands upright. That saves a lot of space and could make the device's ventilation a bit easier. We are talking of a height of 156mm, a depth of 133mm and a width of just 72mm. We are being offered the following ports on the device front. One USB-C, the fast type, 3.2 Gen 2, followed by two regular USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 and a 3.5mm audio jack. On the back there are some more ports. Two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1, display port and HDMI, gigabit LAN and obviously the power input. A disadvantage of having a mini PC that's upright is that they're not always coming with VESA mounting support. So unlike many other mini PCs, this device cannot be hung on the wall or behind monitors or TVs. So what kind of hardware is there inside the AMR5? As already mentioned, an AMD Ryzen 7 5800U mobile processor equipped with respectable 8 cores and 16 threads based on Zen 3. This piece of technology was released back in 2021 and is still considered very solid. It is accompanied by the integrated AMD Radeon graphics, even fully supporting DX12. We are looking at 16GB of the type DDR4 running in dual channel and at a speedy 3200MHz. According to my readings though, that's not entirely correct. It is worth mentioning that we have a fast 512GB M.2 NVMe PCIe SSD in here. Windows 11 Pro is already pre-installed right out of the box. The mini PC powers on by pressing the power button slash knob. Quite nice in itself, but unsightly fingerprints tend to remain. When we boot up the device for the very first time, we are immediately offered an excellent language selection for the further setup steps. As usual for Windows nowadays, the actual setup process has become very user friendly, so anyone can do it. 
Now the first thing I always look for when dealing with devices that have Windows pre-installed on them is bloatware. At this point, big praise goes out to Ace Magician for the fact that apart from Google Chrome, no unnecessary third-party software comes pre-installed. So that's a nice clean Windows install there. However, I did find something to criticize here nonetheless. Why isn't their own RGB software for the device installed already? If you wish to control the lighting to at least some degree, you have to download it yourselves from the manufacturer's website. Unfortunately, the software's functionality is kept at an utmost minimum, to put it that way. Not only are there barely any effect options to choose from, but also the toggle for on and off is terribly unresponsive. To make matters worse, the settings are only temporarily saved. As soon as the PC is restarted, everything goes back to default in terms of lighting. Sadly, the software is pretty much useless. Things look more positive when glancing into the device manager. All drivers have been installed successfully and thoroughly. The mini PC practically is ready for use right out of the box. Windows 11, the pro version of it, was apparently activated using a digital license. A quick check using a CMD command reveals that it is in fact a genuine volume mock key, so that's one that can only be used once. Good or more so obligatory these days, I find the 2.4 and 5 GHz dual band Wi Fi support, Wi Fi 6 by the way, that's accompanied by Bluetooth 5.1. Alright, let's now cover the three modes at our disposal. Out of the box, on default, the device operates at its silent mode, indicated by the blue button lighting, green indicating the auto mode, while red stands for the performance mode, for the maximum performance the device is capable of outputting. To better understand these individual modes, I read out the respective CPU package power using Hardware Info 64. In silent mode, the CPU draws between 12 and 17 watts. In auto mode, that's 18 to 20 watts, whereas in performance mode, 25 to 28 watts. Of course, I did measure the total system power consumption, temperatures, and noise levels in each of the three modes for you. I also wanted to determine how the CPU clock speed behaves at full load with each of the three modes separately. Silent, auto, and performance mode definitely have a major impact on the CPU's frequency. I'd also like to point out that the AMR5 mini PC can be easily upgraded even by novices. You simply pull off the right side panel, which is hooked and held in place by magnets, and you instantly gain access to the RAM and SSD storage. I find it great that there's another M.2 SSD slot available, so we can expand the storage at any time without having to set everything up from scratch again, windows, etc. The NVMe SSD also is really fast. Very nice. However, because we are offered a total of two M.2 slots, the PCIe lanes available had to be shared, which means that only one of all our USB ports offers 3.2 Gen 2 speeds. The RAM is located in the bottom compartment. Both of the available slots are occupied, which is a good thing because this means the RAM finally is operating in dual channel. Unfortunately, that is not always the case with all devices out there. The manufacturer's specification of the RAM at 3200 MHz is technically correct, but in reality it's a bit of a white lie. Within the BIOS, instead of those 3200, the memory clearly is downclocked to only 2400 MHz. Experienced users could easily fix that themselves, but since this is meant to be sold as a full package of a system, I leave everything untouched for all the tests I'm conducting to provide you the most realistic result. Unfortunately, this second side panel cannot be removed, and the device is, generally speaking, really difficult to take apart any other way. Personally, I think that's a bit of a shame, although it wouldn't do much for most people anyway. Alright, now here's the moment of truth. What performance is the Ace Magician AMR5 ultimately capable of delivering? Starting with our classic Cinebench R23 run, even at the power-saving and quiet silent mode, much pricier laptops get easily blown away. While this single-core performance doesn't see a huge drop throughout the modes, things look completely different in the multi-core test. The score achieved in performance mode is pretty impressive, I gotta admit. 
It's a very good result for a mobile CPU, no doubt about it. All tests that are about to follow have been carried out in performance mode. My very first gaming attempt will be in the moderately demanding title Farming Simulator 22. I approached that one bravely with great hopes of Full HD 1080p, but a graphic set too low. On average, I'm well within the 50 to 60 FPS range in game, which in itself would be a remarkable result. It's just a shame that every now and then there are huge stutters that are clearly noticeable in the 1% lows. Shadow of the Tomb Raider might be a little more challenging. Nonetheless, the first thing I'll do is try my luck again at 1080p and the lowest graphics details. The gaming experience isn't even that bad, all things considered. We are certainly averaging roughly 30 FPS. Now if we reduce the resolution down to 1600 by 900, we get around 40 FPS. A gain of 10 FPS does make a difference. But it's only at 720p that we hit the 50 FPS mark, even though we can barely reach and maintain that one. GTA 5 should be much easier to tame. That's why I'm giving it a go at 1080p right away with the remainder of the settings at a well-balanced normal. And we are actually running at a somewhat smooth 50 FPS, occasionally touching on 60 or even 70. On average, we are talking about around 60 FPS. If you need a little more responsiveness, you just go for 1600 by 900 and enjoy an average of 75 to 80 FPS. So while Ace Magician does put a lot of emphasis on the gaming aspect of this mini PC, I kinda disagree with that. You certainly won't be able to play those really demanding, recent AAA games smoothly with the hardware installed in here. Slightly older or lightweight game titles or esports games in general do not pose a problem. Retro games are perfectly playable on this device as well, be it the original or via emulators. Therefore, none of you will be surprised I told you video streaming at high resolutions such as 4K UHD is not an issue at all. As opposed to Intel's integrated graphics, I noticed significantly more performance behind AMD's solution here, which also greatly shows in the support of any 4K UHD screen. With Intel's integrated graphics unit, you won't be able to operate each and every 4K UHD display out there at a smooth 60Hz. With the onboard AMD Radeon graphics, that's a non-issue, works flawlessly. Office work runs super smoothly with the device, perhaps even a little too overpowered. For productive use cases, such as image and video editing though, more performance certainly wouldn't hurt. However, if you consider the performance of mini laptops and especially mini PCs, today's AMR5 does pretty well. Although I did run into a few Radeon driver related bugs here and there, but these have nothing to do with the device itself and can easily be fixed. What kind of data was I able to collect regarding power consumption, temperatures and noise levels? Starting with the silent mode. When idling, 23 watts is to be considered very power efficient. This actually also applies to the absolute maximum load. The temperature in my case settles at a max of 62 degrees Celsius and a noise level of a pleasant 40 decibels can be measured throughout. When switching to auto mode, the power consumption increases noticeably. However, the idle power draw remains unaffected. The noise levels barely change with a max readout of 41 decibels, but this on the other hand translates into temperatures within the realm of 70 degrees. Things get really interesting in performance mode. The idle power draw remains the same here too, but the mini PC now goes up to 95 watts at load. The included power supply is only rated at 65 watts though, quite interesting indeed. Still during all my testing, there were no problems whatsoever. The temperatures are now heading towards 80 degrees though, which is to be considered still okay. But the cooling solution clearly is nearing its limitations. A measured noise level of 45 decibels can no longer be considered inaudible nor pleasant. While I wouldn't state that's noisy, quiet wouldn't quite suffice either. Conclusion Needless to say, one can't really expect perfection from devices of this type. The Ace Magician AMR5 has many great strengths, but of course also has its downsides. What might be screaming gimmick is the knob for those three performance modes and fan profiles, but ultimately it turns out to be an extremely useful implementation. 
So multiple potential types of customers are targeted at once, successfully at say so. Today's mini PC is not only ideal for office work with plenty of performance headroom for the future, but also for other applications that demand a little more performance. Of course, you shouldn't have false hopes regarding image and video editing, but the device is at least usable in that aspect when not expecting too much from it. The only area you should watch out for is gaming. While Ace Magician heavily advertises this mini PC for gaming use, be cautious. As I said, gaming is indeed possible, even really smoothly, but only if you choose the right titles for this device that don't require too much raw performance. Compared to the cheaper alternatives on the mini PC market, I personally think that paying extra for this AMR5 is definitely worth it. Anyone that finds the right use for the Ace Magician AMR5 will definitely end up very happy with this device. I can definitely recommend picking one up. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.